Hi guys, this is GSNL.com and I'm here with the review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. So after the first Galaxy Fold and the Z Fold 2, we have the Z Fold 3 5G. We're dealing here with a smartphone which becomes a bit of a tablet replacement once you open it up like this. It's obviously a foldable device with some novelty, including the under display selfie camera. Now the core experience should remain the same as the Z Fold 2, at least if you look at the screen measurements, but we're getting a higher refresh rate for the main screen, a brand new CPU, stylus support and IPX8 certification. The price tag should be around $1,700 and let's talk about the design first and foremost. Now, as I mentioned before, the handset has received IPX8 certification, which means it can take a bit of water, but not dust. It also has uh, Gorilla Glass Victus protection for the front side. There's plastic protection for the inner screen. And you can see it applied if you look closely. We also have an aluminum frame which has now been reinforced and made sturdier. Now the phone itself is 10 grams lighter than the Z, Z Fold 2 and it's also uh, slimmer from 6.9 millimeters it went to 6.4 millimeters. It weighs 271 grams and keeps the crease in the middle of the screen as you can see here there's a crease where the whole device bends. It's quite visible, I would say it's just as visible as it was on the predecessor. Now, um, I have to say that the under display camera is exactly well hidden, particularly on a white background. So if you zoom in, you're definitely going to be able to see it. And there's a bit of flicker going on there, as you can see for yourself. However, on a darker background, when you're watching a video, uh, the panel becomes pretty immersive, I'll admit it. Now, the handset itself has pretty okay grip, not once I felt that I was able to drop it. When it's closed up, it's quite narrow, easy to use the single hand. And when it opens up, I would say it's comfier than your average iPad mini. That's the first comparison that comes to mind. And even one hand usage is decent for such a large diagonal when the device is opened up. I don't feel any huge differences in the build quality or the hinge uh, and also if you look at it like this there's still a gap between the two parts so I don't feel that much has changed here. Uh, I should also probably mention that there is a change for, for the design of the camera. It's less bulky the camera island compared to the predecessor. Okay that's pretty much it for the design. Let's talk about the display. So I'm going to start with the external one, the cover screen. Uh, this one is a 6.2 inch panel, it's a dynamic AMOLED with 120Hz refresh rate and a resolution of 2268 over 832 pixels, rather atypical. It has once again a pretty high refresh rate, so that's nice to see. It actually is a bit smaller than the Z Fold 2 one, which was 6.23 inches. If you go inside for the main screen, you'll see a smooth transition from the experience you had on the small panel to the big one. This one is a 7.6 inch panel, dynamic AMOLED 2X, 120Hz, HDR10+, and a resolution of 2208 over 1768 pixels. Now the actual experience will be best shown um, via video. So if you go here, we have this test clip here and let's check it out. Okay, so that's what watching a video on the large screen is like. The experience is vivid, crisp, very bright. We have generous view angles here, wide view angles actually. Uh, the contrast is excellent even in full sunlight, so the experience is pretty pleasing. But we do have those dark bars at the top and bottom. And uh, if you want to watch the video like this, where you're getting dark bars again. And let's see how the experience is on the cover screen. So we go here. And... YouTube is here and that's what it looks like on this panel. Uh, I would say that there's a bit more immersiveness or well, maybe not. doesn't cover the full screen, that's what I'm noticing here, even though you pull it quite a bit. Okay, so this is just as crisp, bright and satisfying as the main one, even though there are black bars all around if you're talking about YouTube. In other media players, you will be able to go get rid of them by simply changing the aspect ratio. And the immersivity, as you can see, is full. You will not see the camera cutout unless you have a lighter background. And when I say cutout, I mean the under display camera. Getting rid of this, let's see how we did in our brightness test, because that's what we do here. We do lux meter tests. And first of all, uh, we achieved for the main screen 491 lux units, 
which is uh, pretty solid. Uh, the, even though it's not as bright as the predecessor, the Z Fold 2 had 552 lux. And when it comes to the secondary, the external screen, we had 467 lux units, which once again is below the Z Fold 2 and it's 550 lux. So the predecessor was brighter when it comes to that. For me, it's good enough. It also beats the Huawei Mate XS, so that has to matter if you're making comparisons. Now, uh, if you want to see some of the settings here, we have quite a few. We have the dark and light mode, that is brightness, motion smoothness, which is basically the uh, let's close this up maybe which is the refresh rate which can be set to adaptive or standard standard gets to 60 hertz adaptive jumps to 120 hertz uh, but only when need be and here you have the colors can be set to vivid or natural you have the white balance and you also have the icon for shield to protect you from the damages of the blue light now we're done with the screen. I would say that it's a solid pair of screens, particularly with a high refresh rate, which helps you in games. However, the predecessor was brighter. Now, if you go inside the phone, you won't find one of the most powerful CPUs at the moment, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. In the current case, it's accompanied by 12 gigs of RAM. And uh, at the same time, we're also getting uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. There's also a version with double that amount. There's no micro SD here. And just so you know, it's LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. Um, even though I noticed a bit of heat here and there, especially on the back of the phone, in this area, there's a bit of heat. It doesn't get as hot as the Galaxy Z Flip 3, which I've been testing these days. So there's that. Of course, there's no lag to complain about. It's a very powerful phone, very well specced. And uh, when it comes to the benchmarks, let's see some of them here. Starting with Antutu 8, we're on the 10th spot. This is the top 10 and Z Fold 3 hits the 10th mark just above the Oppo Find X3 Pro and above the Galaxy S21 Ultra, while at the same time uh, staying below the uh, OnePlus 9 Pro and the Zenfone 8. Uh, this is one of the benchmarks, and in Geekbench 5, in the multi-core, results aren't as flattering. We're just above the Xperia 1 Mark II, Galaxy Z Flip 3, but we scored below the Vivo X60 Pro and Galaxy S21 Plus. So, as I said before, not very flattering. The resolution may also matter and the fact that the phone has just been launched. This is the 3D Mark Sensuate Extreme test and we're just above Galaxy S20 Ultra, Note 20 Ultra. Uh, we're not beating the current models, we're below the S21 Ultra and S21 Plus. Now the temperature achieved after taking a few benchmarks, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, 38.5 degrees Celsius. The device gets a bit hot, but I wouldn't go ahead and call it uh, overheating. Now, when it comes to the battery, we have here a, um, let's see which capacity we have here. 4,400 milliamp per hour, it's split in two. So there are two parts of the device and two parts of the battery, 2,200 and 2,200, basically lithium polymer. And uh, let's see what we're getting here. So when it comes to video playback, we achieved 14 hours and 17 minutes, which if you ask me, it's not bad at all, considering we have a high refresh rate. It beats the Galaxy Z Fold 2, which is what matters, also the Galaxy Fold 1 and the Huawei Mate XS. It's below the Galaxy S21 Ultra, in case you were wondering. When it comes to the um, continuous usage, we have reached the 9 hours and 12 minutes mark, the Z Flip 3 was underwhelming in this chapter, the Z Fold is just a bit better but still underwhelming. It goes above the Galaxy Z Fold 2 by 1 hour and is below the first Galaxy Fold and Huawei Mate XS, so keep that in mind. Definitely not a record but we're working with quite the large screen here. I should also mention that we're, don't, we're not getting a charger in the box, we had to use our own and I actually went ahead and used one from the ASUS ROG Phone 2, it's a 30 watt charger and we reached 39% uh, after 30 minutes of charging, 66% after 1 hour and the full charge was done in 1 hour and 47 minutes which is not exactly flattering. Now, we proceed further and we're talking about acoustics. Uh, this handset doesn't rely on its earpiece combined with the bottom speaker. It has separate speakers. So we have a set of speakers here at the top and a set here at the bottom. Once again, separate from the whole earpiece thing. Uh, we don't have an audio jack and uh, we do have some uh, uh, AKG tuning and uh, equalizer and Dolby settings to play with. Now, I think it's time to turn up the music and check out some tunes.
Okay, so an amazing experience. I have to say that this is just music, but in games it gets even crazier, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of bass, a huge volume, excellent high notes, perfect voice. This is one of the best acoustics I've heard ever. Excellent stereophony, it's a very well separated set of frequencies. Basically, uh, success for the acoustics of the Z Fold 3. Now, uh, when it comes to measurements, they don't do justice to what we achieved here, keep that in mind, so no matter what you're going to see, the results in real life are much more impressive. So, we have 83.7 decibels for the bottom speaker and 83.6 for the top one, this is with an acoustic sample. I mean, they're beating the Galaxy S20 series, but not the S21 maybe. Uh, when it comes to gaming, we achieved 94.9 decibels, but you should ignore this because in real life, it's deafening. I've been playing Asphalt 9 and bothering my neighbors, that's something you should remember here. So far from all the specs I've shown you, I would say that the uh, loudness and the bass of the speakers are the best thing about the phone. Now let's talk about the cameras. So just like the Galaxy Z Flip 3 has the same camera setup as last year, the Z Fold 3 has pretty much the same camera setup as last year, except for the under display camera, which is here, you saw it before, it's a cutout here, it's a 4 megapixel shooter, just in case you were wondering, and uh, there's also an external selfie camera, which is this one here, and this one is a 10 megapixel shooter, I'm pretty sure it's the same one, which has been used by Samsung from the Galaxy S10 onwards. At the back side, they made more compact the camera island, but there are three pretty much the same sensors as the Z Fold 2, each of them has 12 megapixels, so one of them has optical immunstabilization, the main one, then there's the telephoto 2x optical zoom and ultra wide 12 megapixel 4k 60 frames per second capture, even though I feel it could capture 8k, uh, judging by the CPU and a LED flash here. We have all the bells and whistles and the features as the Galaxy S21 series does, I'm talking about all, uh, all those cool options, they're here. From Air Doodle to Pro, Portrait Video, Pro Video, Super Slow Mo, and the cool new uh, portrait options for your selfies. Also, single take is here with extra options, so everything you saw on the Galaxy S21 is here. Now, to keep things short, uh, let's go straight to the photo gallery because we have quite a few photos to show you. 197, shy of 200, so let me get this out of the way. Uh, the quality is on par with the Galaxy Note 10, not higher than that, the colors are a bit too intense. The good news is that the main camera and ultra wide camera don't have many differences between colors. The sky has a weird color, pretty much the same one I complained about for the Galaxy S21. It takes a bit of work to focus on close-ups, but the results are pretty solid, even though not all the time. These are some of the shots I've taken, I mean, they're good for Instagram and all that, but uh, they feel more like 2019 or 2020, not 2021 material, so we wanted more color accuracy, these ones are too vivid and sometimes even a bit too exposed for my liking. Details are fine, and when I say fine, I mean, well, iPhone fine, not Huawei fine or even Xiaomi fine nowadays, so there's that. I know that the photos look nice to you, but... If you look closely, there's a bit too much light being caught here. Selfies. So, the first batch of selfies is, I would say, decent uh, at the level of a Galaxy S10. Keep that in mind. And when you're going to see the eyeglasses, it's a sign I have activated the under display camera. By the way, pretty solid bokeh. And here we are. When the glasses are on, we're using the 4 megapixel under display camera and things are definitely soft. Details are a bit softer than the other one, but things are better than the other under display camera I've tested, the ZTX on 20. So there's definitely an upgrade, but more work could be done. So far, so good. Uh, for the second under display camera I'm testing, things are on the right track. Okay, so let's go a bit further here. This is an unrealistic shade of red. In reality, it was much more toned down. So the colors are too intense. That's what you should uh, remember. Uh, we have here a pretty solid bokeh. So bokeh, if you want bokeh, you'll be happy with the results that we achieved here. And uh, one more for Donald. And uh, as I said before, 
the details are on par with the iPhones, that's what you're getting here. The colors are fine, except for the ones that are exaggerated and were pretty much on the same level as the Galaxy Z Fold 2. These are daytime shots. Let's go to the nighttime shots. I've taken a few of them. Uh, I didn't have the phone for as many days as I would have wanted to. Anyways, uh, the camera captures quite a bit of light. It's, uh, I would say, closer to 2020 level than 2021. It's definitely not uh, the level of a Galaxy S21 phone or a OnePlus 9. It's closer to a Galaxy Note 10, maybe even a Galaxy S20. The ultra wide shots are a bit poorer. However, the streetlight halos aren't as bothersome as they were on the Galaxy Z Flip 3, which I tested recently. So it handles light better than the Galaxy Z Flip 3 if you are choosing your foldable on account of the camera. Uh, the whole 2x optical zoom I didn't even mention because it's not worth mentioning, it's unimpressive nowadays, if you don't have 3x optical zoom you're booed by everyone, the Galaxy S21 doesn't have it for example, that's a bit of a bummer, so there's that. Now these are actually pretty solid shots and I cannot exactly tell which ones are with the night mode on, that's how much light we're capturing here, so, so far the standout would actually be the nighttime shots compared to the daytime ones. Now let me go to the MX player to show you the 17 videos I've taken, well, not all of them. As I said for the Z Flip 3, stabilization is excellent, Samsung has been using an excellent stabilization system on its phones ever since the Galaxy S10, they've never faltered in that area, and they're keeping up pretty well with the requirements. This video was taken without the special Super Steady option on, I have a separate video with the Super Steady and things get even better stabilized. I actually am feeling a bit of lag here with a stutter, but that's from the video player. Okay, so as you can see, very smooth, not one trace of flicker or hesitation or problem with the focus, and I am descending at least 20 stairs. When it comes to the colors, videos are like this. Um, surprisingly enough, even the Full HD ones are pretty rich in color and uh, I would say satisfying in clarity. I know the colors are too intense, just as we saw for the photos. And once again, I'm going to say it, just as we left it on the Z Fold 2, not much has changed. Okay, so this is a selfie video. I would say good enough for your vlogging needs and frankly speaking, a bit better stabilized than the predecessor and the Z Flip 3. And I'm also helping, uh, I'm requiring a colleague of mine to film me with a portrait option and things are pretty catchy if you're planning on putting this on Instagram. Uh, this is the focus test, focusing on an object in the foreground and on the background, alternating between them, I would say pretty fast. Maybe not as fast as the Z Flip 3, believe it or not. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I would say that we're somewhere between the Galaxy Note 10 and the S20, that's my opinion of what we have here. Even though I complained about the colors, I feel that I like them more than I did the photos. And these are low light uh, videos. You can definitely see a lot of noise here. More noise than the Galaxy S21 series, but the result is comparable in quality and details to the S20 series, for sure. Okay, and I even went ahead and moved around for a little bit, just for a stabilization test during the nighttime, and things aren't exactly bad, so stabilization is solid during the nighttime, even though when you're descending stairs, there may be some movement. That's pretty much it. Nothing has changed from the year 2020, from the Z Fold 2, is basically the same camera, but with a change here, an experimental under display camera, which is better than the ZTE Axon 20. Now that I'm done with the cameras, uh, we can address other things like connectivity. So as you can see, we have NFC available. There's also Wi-Fi 6E, 5G. This one at the bottom is a USB-C 3.2 port. There's Bluetooth 5.2. We have a um, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and the calls were pretty loud and clear. Now the speed test is a whole different ball game. I did quite a few tests, so let's see them uh, here. Okay, so pretty impressive in the Wi-Fi regard, 791 mega per second in download, 793 mega per second in upload. For 4G, we went up to 184 mega per second downloads and uh, 53, 56.1 mega per second uploads. Expected a bit higher, but in the end, I'm happy with what we achieved here. And finally, we're at that point of the review where we can talk about the software. This is One UI 3.1.1, applied on top of Android 11. And for security, I have activated both the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner. They make a good pair together, and they're pretty snappy and fast. 
Uh, okay, so the experience, 85% uh, of it is exactly the same as you know it from the Galaxy S21. Let's get that out of the way. Now, the fact that we have a big screen here means that we can do multitasking, quite a bit of it. So if I want to do this, I can split the screen in two and maybe check out the settings while I'm seeing photos. Right now it's split in only two sections, but you can also have a third app here. So if I do this, I can maybe take those two apps and uh, trigger third one, let's say, maybe this one. So usually it's a good idea to have the app as a pop-up view on top of the other apps. And then you can actually snap it to one part of the screen till it becomes part of the experience. So that's it. Right now I'm using three screens at the same time. I can see apps in the App Store, I can see pictures and navigate around settings. That's the whole triple window feature that people have been talking about and improve multitasking. Of course, you can have multiple other apps. Now, the really cool thing here, which not many people know about, is the fact that this edge bar can be fixed, can be pinned. We have an option, we can pin it and turn it into a task bar, just like in Windows is pretty cool if you ask me. Things more are more accessible, you can get to them faster and that for me is a pretty big win. You can create pairs of apps which will open up together and you can unpin it when you're done. That's pretty cool. Of course we also have the S Pen which you can use to write on the device. Sadly we did not get it uh, for testing. Uh, of course just like the Z Flip you can use the whole flex thing. So flex means that a part of the screen shows content and the other one shows your options this applies here and not just the 90 degrees, also multiple angles. This is also, also useful when writing. So I can write on the keyboard and at the same time uh, see a website or watch a video or do something else. Uh, basically consume content on top while I'm writing on the bottom. That's the core idea of the flex mode. So you've seen the camera, you've seen this. This also applies in YouTube. I can watch a video here while I'm posting and writing a comment and uh, many more apps will be available to have the flex mode. You probably should be able to force it via the settings, activate it to the taskbar from the labs section, just so you know. Okay, so split screen, we got that. Uh, we also have the cover screen to make use of and you can actually use it for the, uh, well, actually activated it from here. I can see a preview, a cover screen preview if I want to take selfies with the main camera. That's one of its uses. And the thing I kept mentioning throughout the review, the passage from the smaller screen to the big one is seamless. So if I'm in the Play Store and I want to quickly go to the app or game there, it takes just a second as I open it up, zero lag. So if I'm forgetting anything, you can definitely see it in the text review. Now, one UI means that you're going to have this whole pull down quick settings area all the way down, thanks to one UI 3.0. One and you just saw before the fact that we have DeX here, the Z Flip 3 doesn't have it. We have screen recorder, link to Windows, smart view, we have the dark mode and we also have always on display, just in case you were wondering, uh, for both screens, the external one and the main one. These are the clock styles and you can do so much more, even include some cute animations. We have biometrics and security, privacy features, digital well-being, battery care, accessibility, and so much more. I did not forget about the whole uh, Samsung Labs thing where I activated the uh, side taskbar. Okay, so the pre-installed apps. So we have the Samsung Suite, which includes smart things. There's my files, internet, Samsung Health, Bixby, which is triggered from here still. Oh, so apparently it's in use by another app. Let's try again. This is Bixby. This is the aggregator, which can be either one offered by Google or one offered by Samsung. Uh, we also have here AR Zone and Pen Up, since we're using the S Pen. This is the Google Suite. And this is the Microsoft Suite, Office, OneDrive, LinkedIn, and Outlook. We also have the Play Store, Samsung Members, Galaxy Store, Facebook, Spotify, Gallery, which, by the way, the Gallery also supports the mode I shown you before where you're consuming content on one part of the screen and you can see the options on the other part and the whole editing thing. So basically like a smaller laptop or like the Nokia communicator back in the day. Okay, so let's get once again back to the pre-installed apps. Uh, the most useful one is Samsung Notes. You're going to be taking notes using the S Pen, I keep mentioning, and the flex mode will once again come into play. I'm pretty sad that I didn't get it to test, but 
you probably saw a bunch of reviews with that. There's the game launcher here where I have my good old Asphalt 9 and just as we prepare to wind down I'm going to show you some gaming and it's time for the verdict and the pros and cons. On the pro side for the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is the fact that we now have a taskbar which is something unheard of on a smartphone. Uh, it's a well-built phone for sure At the same time, it has bright screens, which are pretty crisp, and uh, they also are solid when it comes to colors. And uh, the performance is definitely high. I'm talking about how future-proof the device is and the fact that you're going to get three years of uh, updates, as you probably know already, of Android updates. So if it's Android 11, you're getting 12, uh, 13, and also possibly 14. Uh, video playback time is fine. I'm talking about the battery life. Uh, we have uh, superb speakers. I would call them the selling point of the phone, even though it sounds weird. One UI 3.1 is also a selling point here. One of the best ways of implementing Android on a device. Uh, as you're seeing here, you can definitely feel the fluidity of the motion. We have 120 hertz refresh rate here. Uh, I would also say that the S Pen support is a plus. We're not getting a Galaxy Note this year, so this one can serve as a worthy replacement. The under display camera is still a bit hit and miss, but it's definitely better than the ZTE implementation I saw on the Axon 20. We have, we have IPX8 certification and uh, let's see what else. Uh, I would also say that the device is pretty easy to handle in spite of it having still a huge main display. And the whole flex mode is definitely vital for power users, not once I found myself in need to pull out a second phone. As you know, people in my biz tend to have two or three phones with them. This one can replace them, just one device for those power users. So those are the pros. On the cons, uh, it's still a rather expensive phone without bringing a huge amount of innovation from the last year model. It doesn't come with a charger or a micro SD card slot or an S Pen bundled. Uh, the crease is still pretty visible here in the middle of the screen. Uh, the camera on the display is also pretty visible on a wider background. Battery life is a bit unimpressive even though it has evolved from the predecessor. The predecessor was brighter, the camera hasn't changed one bit from last year and the device remains a bit thick when being closed down like this. It's not as pocketable as the Galaxy Z Flip, uh, that's for sure. However, power users will definitely want this only if they didn't have the last year model. So, uh, the core idea is that you're getting some things which you're not getting on other phones, two screens which are rather large, a taskbar, high refresh rates, and S Pen support, which are pretty unique features limited to Samsung nowadays. It's also it's a blast for me to say that, but uh, it's a cheaper phone than usual when you're referring to foldable phones. It's $1,700, but such phones used to be much more expensive a couple of years ago, 2000 plus, so things are changing. And at the rate we're going, it's going to get cheaper pretty soon. So it's a power user phone with an upgrade from the Z Fold 2 by about 10-15%. The camera stays the same. That's something to remember, but the flex mode and taskbar are setting it pretty well for the power users. That's it from us. Bye-bye.